Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about royalty romances. I love royalty romances. This is my third recommendation video with royalty romances. You can go check out the other ones down below. They'll be listed for you if you've not seen them yet. But these are 10 more recommendations that I really enjoyed. I don't like fame, the fame trope, but when it's royalty, like give it to me. I finally ended up reading Twisted Games by Anna Huang. I feel like this is a staple now in royalty romance Rex. Bridget is the crown princess for this country. I think it's made up country. I don't remember. But Reese has been her bodyguard for a few years now and they've become friends and it's developed into something more. I'm also a huge sucker for bodyguards, especially with royalty romances. <laughs> so they are constantly bickering and fighting with each other. There's a large age gap between the two and there is also like a class difference between them. So it's forbidden in a lot of ways, but they cannot help but fall head over heels in love with each other. They keep their relationship a secret, but then something happens to where um, Bridget is now gonna take up the mantle of being the next ruler of her country. And there's like a stipulation um, that whoever's ruling the country must be married. Be married to someone of noble birth and Reese is not. So what's gonna happen? I was obsessed with this book. I could not put this book down. And I hope that Anna Wong writes more <laughs> royal romances cause I think she did a great job with this one. Another one of my favorites is The Princess and the Rogue. Princess is literally the title. Um, and this is actually like a hidden identity story too because this is about Princess Anastasia, but no one knows that she's Princess Anastasia. Sebastian is our hero in here and he's doing some investigating at a certain type of club okay and that just happens to be where Anya is but not to work there with like the other girls she's there to help teach the girls how to read um so he bumps into Anya and he thinks that she's one of the girls that works at the establishment and he's like I will pay anything for you to kiss me like I will do anything like <laughs> I'll pay whatever you want and she's like uh I don't work here sorry no but they end up having their kiss and she basically disappears and he's like I need to find that woman. Um, little does he know that that woman is actually secretly Princess Anastasia and she's been hiding ever since Russia got overtaken. I love Anastasia. I love Anastasia retellings and her identity definitely plays a role in this book. A novella I have is Fake Fiance by Cassie Min. B is a uh, twin sister, I'm pretty sure. And her twin sister is arranged to marry Prince Alden, but her sister never shows up and she doesn't want to embarrass Alden at all. And so she kind of dresses up as her sister. Like they have a few meetings before the actual wedding itself, like the engagement party, the announcement and everything. And so she dresses up as her sister to like make sure that Alden isn't embarrassed by no one showing up for him. And then Alden ends up falling for B. So when the sister actually shows up for the wedding, he's like, who is this woman? Like, this is not the woman I've been falling for. A short, quick, fun read if you want just a little novella with the royalty romance trope. Another novella is released by Claire Kent. Each book in the series has a different like theme to it. So it's like sci-fi, but it has a different theme in each book. The first book in the series takes place on a prison planet. Third book in the series takes place on this prehistoric planet. But book two, this book release takes place on a royal planet, which is really interesting. Our heroine in here is the sister to the queen of the planet. And she is very interested in one of her sister's suitors. She has many suitors vying for her attention. And that just happens to be Hall, who is on the planet for a secret mission. But the only way he could like be accepted to travel to the planet is if he would be courting the queen. But then he ends up falling for the queen's sister, Kyla, instead. And they have to keep their relationship a secret because the only way he can stay on the planet is if he's courting the queen. The royalty aspects of this book go beyond like the romance part. Like there's so much political intrigue in this short little novella. It's very entertaining. A fantasy romance that I have is A Curse of Queens by Amanda Boucher. This is her latest book in the Kingmaker Chronicles. I love the Kingmaker Chronicles. I have like the whole stack right there. I don't have a physical copy of this book because I don't think it's in mass market paperback. So I'm kind of waiting to see if they will make it in mass market paperback. Anyway, the heroine in here is a princess. I also can't really talk about this book all that much because you meet both characters in the main trilogy of this series, like the first three books. So Joe in here is the sister to Griffin from book one and she's a princess in this fantasy realm. And this is her romance with Flynn who she's been pining after for years. You get to read about their tension in the first couple books in the series. They're not the main couple in those books though. And it's like an age gap romance. When she was 16, I think she told Flynn who's her brother's best friend, like confessed her feelings for him. And he's like, close to seven years older than her and he was mortified. He was like, I cannot be with you 
you are so much younger than me and her heart was completely like broken um but ever since then they both held torches for each other so you have this like pent up tension between the two of them and the two of them in this book are alone together to go on a journey to help a certain person that you've met in this series and her baby that is about to be born so during their journey their pent up feelings get released amanda bichet's writing is just phenomenal and I love how she adds a lot of royalty aspects to her fantasy romance books specifically. An alien romance one that I have is Captive of the Horde King by Zoe Draven. I feel like like every single one of these books in the series could be a part of this trope um, but it's royalty in a different aspect because it's a horde king which is different than what we would think as like a king from our world or like a fantasy realm. Like this takes place on an entirely new planet. It's very sci-fi barbarian-esque. Like he reminds me of Cal Drogo. Like that's like the status holding he has. Our heroine here is a human who lives with a bunch of other humans that are refugees to this alien planet. And there's a bunch of rules for humans when they move to the planet. Like they can't kill any animals and they can't burn the land. Our heroine's brother um, reads a book one day and realizes like their crops are failing and a way that they can grow better is if you burn the soil and the existing crops to make the soil more fertile for the next round of plants. So he does that but the fire gets a little bit out of control and the neighboring horde ends up seeing the fire and comes running to seek retribution to get revenge on whoever like disobeyed their rules. The heroine steps up and is like I will take responsibility for my brother take me instead of him. And that's exactly what the Horde King does. He takes her back to his Horde and decides to make her queen of his people. Like, it's so good. This whole series, if you have not read the series yet, get on it. Um, if you are a little hesitant on reading alien romance, like these characters are fairly human looking. Like the only difference is like they have gold skin, they have a tail and they have like glowing eyes. And that's like, the only differences between us. <laughs> um, so if you really want to dip your toe into alien romances, I definitely recommend this series, especially if you love fantasy romance. This series definitely reads like a fantasy romance series. A monster romance that I have is Monster's Bride by R.K. Pierce. This really reminds me of Radiance by Grace Draven, but flipped. So Radiance by Grace Draven is a friends to lovers romance and this one is enemies to lovers. So our heroine is from a human elf kingdom and she has arranged to marry the son, the crown prince of the Minotaur kingdom and their families do not get along whatsoever but they need this alliance to happen to better their kingdoms. So when they get married, they have to learn to accept each other and get to know one another, even though they hate the other's like species. So again, reminds me of Radiance, however, flipped because it's definitely more enemies to lovers. Um, and like this whole book takes place in the Minotaur's kingdom, in the castle, and her having to deal with like, having to be now a Minotaur ruler. What does that mean for her? Then I have The Stoneheart Bride by Katie Wilde. This is another little novella, but it is also a fantasy romance. And I really enjoyed this novella. So our heroine in here, she is the niece to this king on this fantasy realm. The past couple of months, she's gotten to know a guy that is visiting the kingdom. And her uncle basically tells this guy like, how about you marry my niece? And we have like this great alliance between our families and the guy's like, no, I could never marry her. The heroine is listening in on this secretly and she is absolutely heartbroken so she ends up like running out of the castle and taking a breather out in the woods by the castle but then she ends up getting kidnapped by orcs and guess who goes to save her other than the man she thought rejected her <laughs> so you may or may not actually be in love with her this whole time okay <laughs> speaking of radiance by grace draven i would love to mention another grace draven book this is the king of hell which is her first published work our heroine is the handmaiden to this princess who is destined to marry the king of hell who is the king to this neighboring land who basically looks like this guy on the cover he doesn't look very human to these humans and the princess is absolutely terrified and the heroine is best friends to this princess um she's terrified of him she doesn't really want to marry him but she has to when our heroine ends up meeting this king for the first time she falls in love with him right off the bat which is definitely forbidden because that is now her best friend's husband. The king may or may not also be in love with this woman but they can't be together because he has to do right by his people and he marries the princess. Thus starts their forbidden 
romance. That's all I want to say for this one. I don't want to spoil anything. And lastly, I have Claimed by Her Mates by Grace Goodwin, another alien romance, but Grace Goodwin writes alien sci-fi romances um, where all of them are basically like human looking. So this is book number three in the Interstellar Bride program series, um, where human women can sign up to be an interstellar bride and get matched to the best genetic match of hers on another planet. <laughs> so Leah ends up doing that to escape a horrible man who has her in his clutches. So she's assigned to the planet of Viking and she's even more shocked when she gets to the planet to realize like she hasn't been mated to one man. She hasn't been mated to two men. She's been mated to three men and they're all identical triplets. <laughs> These three men were born as identical triplets to this royal family and growing up they were like dispersed into different areas of the land. They never grew up with each other, um, but they meet up for the first time ever to finally have their mate. And the only way to make all three of their different lands like unite and become one country again is by producing an heir that is going to rule over everybody. So that's where Leah comes in. This definitely is a more unique book by Grace Goodwin. She writes a lot of sci-fi romances that are fairly similar, but this one definitely takes the cake for being one of the most unique ones I've read by her. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 royal romance recommendations. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the king or queen emoji in the comment section down below. I think there are king or queen emojis if not a crown. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.